Now. All right. <laughs> public notice of this meeting pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act has been given by the board secretary on June 22nd, 2022 in the following manner. Posted notice on the school bulletin board at the administration building, transmitted to the Courier Post, Philadelphia Inquirer, and the clerk of Cherry Hill Township. <clears throat> please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. And please stand. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mrs. Sugars, would you call roll, please? Mrs. Arroyo. Mrs. Stratton. Here. Mrs. Fleischer. Ms. Friedel. Mr. Mayor. Here. Dr. Rude. Ms. Stern. Here. Mrs. Tong. Here. Mr. Avadia. Here. All right, we'll start the evening in festive manner with uh, board recognitions and we'll turn it over to Dr. Malash. Thank you, Mr. Avadia. Uh, I'm very excited about the recognition that we are going to do this evening. Uh, and the first one is for the 2022 edition of the Star Games. Uh, the rebirth of the star games uh, post pandemic and uh, miss mallory if you would head up to the podium i'm going to uh, ask miss mallory to provide some assistance and also i know in the audience is miss Kristen bradford uh, miss bradford i know your family is with you but if you could join miss mallory at the podium she's real excited about public recognition I know. <laughs> she's like do i have to talk i'm like no you don't have to say anything um, so as you know, on Friday, May 13th, um, the school district held its ninth annual Star Games on a two-year hiatus due to the pandemic. Um, and I wanted to take an opportunity tonight to publicly recognize the committee and um, our sponsors because the, the process leading up to the Star Games, and, and I've done a lot of activities as an educator um, throughout my career, um, was in, intense, I'll use that word. So there is so much that goes into an event like that for it to, to be as great as it is. Um, so I wanted to, I, I asked Dr. Malash, I said, can I take an opportunity to talk a little bit about it? Um, and I wanted Kristen to be here. So I got my first email from Kristen on August 20th of 2021. And I was looking through my emails just to kind of highlight some things. And I think we probably emailed each other about 150 times since then. Um, and we exchanged phone numbers right away, text constantly. Um, my first meeting virtual um, was at 6.30 a.m. in the morning. Um, I'm up with my son, but it's still very early. Um, and I logged in and I was amazed and just blown away. There were 20 staff on the call at 6.30 in the morning. Um, and I think it's safe to say that this is a school year um, where teachers and staff, their plates are pretty full, overflowing already. So I had a moment that first meeting that was really um, inspiring, I'll use that word, because they were just so committed and they were so excited to be there and they were so happy and everybody, Kristen led the meeting, um, there was an agenda and that's where the planning started and it went on from there and there was commitment from the entire committee throughout the whole process. Um, so I do wanna take a moment to uh, go through the team real quick. Uh, so obviously Kristen Bradford led the committee. Um, Sarah Jamrogowitz, John Aiello, Daniel Butler, Christopher Halliday, Lindsay Karp, Christina Wilson, Amy Edinger, Bridget Garrity Bantle, Dina Campbell Mathias, Kathleen Connolly, Marie Spannenberg, Margaret Strimmel, Michelle Taylor, Brittany Lamb, Heidi Brunswick, Michael Ciavarella, Robin Schwartz, Leanna Lennon, Mark Wisely, Shilpa DeVay, Lisa Patron, Jessica Barreto, Hamisi Tarrant. Um, those of you who know Hamisi, he, he did leave the district. Um, he's an administrator in Haddonfield now, but he was a part of our committee throughout the entire process and then brought students from Haddonfield to the event that day as well. So we were very happy to have him and his expertise because Chris and I were kind of both new to the planning process of the Star Games. Um, Lauren Giordano, Lori Ferranto, Paul Coaster, Diane O'Brien, Dr. Tony Damon, and Mike Brow. Um, there were over 100, 290 students that participated in the Star Games. 
over 100 volunteers, 150 Cherry Hill teachers and administration. Um, some of the things just to kind of go through that go into the planning of something like this, um, registration forms, medical packets, transportation. Kristen had to get quotes and bids for the buses. I mean, I was just blown away by the amount of, of things that went into this event and the, the commitment by the committee and Kristen. Um, she's already planning for next year. I think about a week after the event, I got an email about an Aldi grant and I'm like, let's just get to June. <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm empowered and inspired by their commitment, their excitement. Um, I did also wanna take a minute to just thank our sponsors publicly. Um, DJ Babyface, Minuteman Press, the Cherry Hill Police Department, the Philadelphia Phillies, uh, the Fanatic, if you were there, was a big hit. Um, Aramark, Woodcrest Elementary School, and other elementary schools throughout the district also did fundraisers. Uh, West Student Activities, OHM Grown Yoga, the Cherry Hill Fire Department, TNT Rental, uh, West Art Students painted faces and made all the posters for the event. Uh, the Cherry Hill Alternative School, CHEA, All-Star Kids Karate Academy, um, and West Student Activities. Yeah, I said that. One. <laughs> so um, without them, we would not have been able to have the event either. So we're very excited. Um, and again, Kristen, thank you so much for your commitment and dedication to our students and the district. She, Ms. Bradford, you don't want to, you don't want to talk. <laughs> Do you want to say a couple of words? Sure, I think, I think and, I or if nothing else, just introduce Not your very family. Not good at on the, you know, winging introduce it, but um, <laughs> yeah, my family wanted to come to support uh, my husband, Josh, my daughter, Emily, uh, my son, Zachary. Uh, and I guess I just want to make it known that uh, this is most certainly a team effort. It wouldn't, wouldn't be possible uh, for the board of ed for supporting us and, uh, Dr. Mal uh, Malash, uh, all those that are involved. And um, we just wanna thank you so much for allowing us to put this, put this together. And um, next year, I think we're, we're gonna put, put a uh, video together so we can show you uh, how powerful this event really is. And, and that's something that I saw on that very day. So, uh, and I just wanna thank the committee and thank Caitlin uh, for everything, because again, it wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for all the people that were involved. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Mrs. Bradford. Beautifully well spoken. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, again, please convey our thanks once again to the committee. Uh, it was a tremendous day, uh, a tremendous day. So next, Mr. Ovadia and board members, we have a second uh, recognition this evening. Um, this evening, we're gonna be recognizing the Raptors Roar newspaper staff from Rosa Middle School. And I'm gonna ask Ms. Lillian Halden to walk up to the podium. Uh, this will be one of Mrs. Holland's, if not one of the last, then probably her last official act as she is retiring at the end of this week uh, from her role uh, as a sage mentor and incredible teacher at Rosa Middle School. Um, so I'm going to ask Mrs. Holland just to talk a little bit about the American uh, Scholastic Press Association School Newspaper Award uh, for the junior high division uh, that the uh, Raptors Roar was awarded. Talk a little about her staff, and I know that she has some of her editors and staff members with her uh, that she'll be able to introduce as well. Okay, thank you very much for your kind words, first of all. I think uh, Thursday at midnight is, is when <laughs> it's all done. So, um, and it's been a great run. So yes, I'm very proud of these young people here who are here with their uh, parents. So I'd like to give them a round of applause uh, for them. So, many of them have been members of the newspaper staff since they were in sixth grade and uh, quite a number of them. Would the eighth graders raise their hands, please? Okay. So, um, so since, and you can put your hands down. So since sixth grade, they've been coming and um, it's wonderful to see them evolve. So um, one, of the, one, one of the clubs that was actually uh, aided by the pandemic, believe it or not, was the newspaper staff because that we were able to continue uh, online. And um, of course it was nice to uh, get back together again, um, but they come on a weekly basis. Basically we meet every week and they do a lot of writing. Um, we have a, a lot of fun, there's give and take. 
um, and then they produce these incredible articles. Um, Mrs. Mark, who couldn't be here today, she's the genius behind the wonderful layout that happens. Uh, talk about a full plate. Uh, she does the instrumental music at uh, Rosa, and also um, she and I have done this gig together 20 out of my 21 years. Um, in fact, when it was offered to me, I had been a professionally, I'd have been a professional journalist, and I knew what it entailed. I'll never forget sitting with the assistant principal, and she said to me, so um, would you, you know, how about if you do the newspaper, you know, because, you know, you've, you're a professional journalist, and knowing what it takes, I didn't say anything. She said, okay, well, how about if we have someone who will do the layout, and you can do the editing, and that's how it started, and actually, it is a lot of work. Um, for the kids, for the adults, but it's a labor of love. And what they come up with is just incredible. Many of the articles are not assigned by me. Um, I do the meeting with them or Mrs. Mark, they come up with it, which is even more impressive. And what you should know, this newspaper contest, so um, they take apart, you send them a couple of issues, you have to send them two, and they, they really nitpick as they should. Um, and the first time we entered, we got a third place and we, you know, took a look at what the comments were. And then we got a, uh, a second place. And then we entered again, we got another second place again, a lot of nitpicking. And then finally, um, we were recognized as first place. And in this contest, we were the only middle school in the state of New Jersey, who was uh, uh, honored with the first place and one of only three in the entire country. So it is a super, super big, big deal uh, to do this. And while we were um, waiting to come in, I told the kids they have to continue this. I urge them to continue take journalism um, in high school. And I think Dan, Ovadia is taking honors journalism. He was an editor, a co-editor in chief his year. So, um, and he'll be going into sophomore year East. So anyway, um, I'm very proud of them. And would you like me to read out the certificates? Okay. So when I read your name, if you would come up and um, receive your certificate, that would be wonderful. So first we have uh, Nico Spatucci, editor in chief. If you would come up, he's one of our two editors in chief. Thank you, Nico. And we have Muskan Batra, our news features editor. Yay, Muskan. And Wolfgang Drake, he's our entertainment editor. Um, and talk about creativity. Um, you know, he, this is one creative person. Uh, they're all creative, but um, you're going to be reading him in, like I told him, the New Yorker or um, something, because it's like incredible. Uh, then we have uh, our lifestyles editor, Lavanya Viswanathan. Um, there you go, Lavanya. We have uh, the guy who keeps us together at the meetings. We have our managing editor, uh, Dan Chen. <laughs> Congratulations. Dan does one of my uh, favorite columns called Yakety Yak, which grew out of an assignment in my, one of, in my English class where the kids, in order to get them tuned in to being good listeners, they have to write down snippets of random conversation. And so Dan has continued that as a column and what he comes up with, it's pretty hilarious. Um, is Koi here? Koi is one of our wonderful staff members. So Koi Baker, um, I think Koi did not miss a meeting this year, but I don't think she's here. Uh, so I'm just gonna pass through the ones I know who are not here. Is Mika here? Okay, I thought Mika might be here. Okay, so let me go through that. Um, we got Dan. Okay, just uh, okay, just bear with me. Okay, I'm getting there. All right, what about Zarish? I've seen Zarish. We have um, a pretty uh, big staff, but um, we have a few people who come, not a few, we have a number of people who come on a regular basis. How about Alexis? Okay. I didn't see, um, and Ella, Ella, continuing the family tradition, Ella Avadia, uh, who's written some incredible articles. 
One I will never forget. She wrote an article about a bird where like uh, this became like a neighborhood bird. And I, I'm reading this and I'm like blown away by it. You know, again, very creative. So great job. Um, okay. Getting there. All right, let's see. Okay, is there anyone here whose name, any staff member here whose name I did not read out? Okay, all right, good. All right, so anyway, um, thank you so much. The recognition meant so much to them. And um, it's, just, it's just great that you did that. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mrs. Halden. And Mrs. Halden, if you and the students would go out so Mrs. Wilson could get a picture of all of you together. Uh, Mrs. Wilson will actually take the certificates back from you uh, and we will get those, we'll get them out to the kids. All right. And then you are welcome to come back for the rest of the meeting, but certainly don't, it's, there's not a requirement to do that. Thank you, Well done. Next, we're going to go to a presentation. I bet you can't guess which one. Uh, and so I'll turn it over to Dr. Melange to introduce that for us. Thank you, Mr. Avadi. Uh, I'm actually going to ask Mr. Goldthorpe, who is one of our district curriculum supervisors, to walk up to the podium. Dr. Morton, do you want to say anything to give a little uh, kickoff here for Mr. Goldthorpe? Uh, Mr. Goldthorpe has prepared an outstanding presentation. I don't want to steal any of his thunder. Uh, I know there's, there have been uh, many questions about the relatively new Eureka Mathematics program as to what students are learning, how it differs from traditional mathematics curricula. Um, again, I don't want to take his, his thunder. He's going he's gonna to answer every question you might have had and more in his presentation. <laughs> so without further ado, Mr. Goldthorpe. All right. Thank you very much, Dr. Morton and Dr. Malash. Uh, as they said, my name is Scott Goldthorpe, Supervisor of Curriculum and Instruction. Uh, specifically, I work with our mathematics and science departments, uh, kindergarten through 12th grade. So as you're accustomed to, I like to uh, always begin our presentation, uh, linking it, it back to our mission statement, district goals and major activities, which you guys are all intimately uh, familiar with. So specifically this evening, uh, looking at that purpose and passion goal to develop highly engaging learner-centered experiences within an environment that promotes voice, choice, and passion for learning. Uh, so then diving a little further down into the major activities as part of the blueprint for student success to review and analyze the curriculum based on student achievement through the curriculum management and revision cycle. Uh, so as we talk about K-12 mathematics, it's important to begin with the purpose of mathematics education. So this is uh, as given by the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. The purposes are to develop deep mathematical understanding uh, at the high school level that's, that's further expanded upon to expand professional opportunity, uh, to understand and critique the world and to experience wonder, joy, and beauty um, of mathematics. So curriculum and instruction is commonly referred to as thinking about what we teach and how we teach it. So in this case, the curriculum, what we teach is the Eureka Math Program, which is completely aligned to the New Jersey Student Learning Standards. And our instruction, how we teach, incorporates research-backed strategies from this book that we're reading as a secondary mathematics uh, cohort. Uh, it's entitled Building Thinking Classrooms in Mathematics, Grades K to 12. Uh, and incorporating technology platforms such as Desmos to enhance classroom instructional practices. And finally, it's the work of our teachers and the expertise they have in the classroom to use instructional practices that bring our curriculum to life for all of our students. So as we look a little further into our curriculum and, and what we teach in that Eureka Math program, um, as you're aware, we implemented Eureka Math kindergarten through fifth grade in the 2019-2020 school year. We implemented Eureka Math in grades six, seven, and eight this past school year, 21-22. And then we will be implementing Eureka Math in our algebra classes beginning this fall in 2022. So when we, we dive a little deeper, I wanted to highlight this statement from the New Jersey Department of Education. It reads, for more than a decade, research studies of mathematics education in high-performing countries 
have concluded that mathematics education in the United States must become substantially more focused and coherent in order to improve mathematics achievement in this country. So let's look a little more closely at what focused and coherent looks like in the kindergarten to algebra curriculum. So this is uh, one of the high school algebra standards from the arithmetic with polynomials and rational expressions strand. Uh, so it states, understand that polynomials form a system analogous to the integers, namely, they are closed under the operations of addition, subtraction, and multiplication, and then to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. Uh, so we're going to look at how this uh, curriculum that we use builds conceptual knowledge towards that standard over the kindergarten to algebra continuum. So let's go all the way back to, to first grade and, and put our first grade student hats on. Here's an example from our curriculum. Sue is writing the number 34 on a place value chart. She cannot remember if she has four tens and three ones or three tens and four ones. So use a place value chart to show how many tens and ones are in 34. Use a drawing and words to explain this to Sue. So you can see some student work there uh, with a ones chart and a, a tens chart, and then uh, the model and showing how 34 is cor correctly written there and modeled with three tens and four ones. As students move up to second grade, uh, you can see now see how we're decomposing the number 263 uh, and how it's really composed of two hundreds, six tens, and three ones. As students move up into fourth grade, they expand their model to now include the millions place value. And you can see how the number 90,523 written in expanded form is really 90,000 plus 500 plus 20 plus three. Continuing right along to fifth grade, students again extend that place value chart now to the right of the decimal point to include fractional units. And then they can write out that number 57 and 281 thousandths as a sum of products. Continuing along rapid pace here, going on to middle school, uh, students extend their understanding of the model of place value chart to include powers of 10. Um, and you can see that goes on in both directions there and students develop that understanding. And then finally, we get to algebra. Uh, students further expand on their model and transition from that base 10 place value chart to a base X place value chart, and ultimately how to add polynomial expressions. So here at the lower half of the screen, you can see how adding 125 and 432 is analogous to adding X squared plus 2X plus 5 and 4X squared plus 3X plus 2. So now looking back at our high school algebra standard, understanding that polynomials form a system analogous to the integers, namely they are closed under the operations of addition, subtraction, and multiplication, and then to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials, you can see how that focused and coherent learning progression in the curriculum helps students build the conceptual understanding needed to be successful in high school algebra. Shifting now to the instruction lens and, and how we teach. Uh, when looking at instruction, uh, I always begin all of our secondary mathematics department meetings with our guiding principles. All students can and should develop a belief that mathematics is sensible, worthwhile, and doable. All students are capable of making sense of mathematics in creative, interactive, and relevant ways. All students can and should engage in rigorous mathematics through rich, challenging tasks. Now let's take a brief look at what instruction looks like in classrooms across the district. So this is a picture from Mr. Helgeson's third grade class where students shared different ways that they were able to count the six dots. So I included this to start specifically as it highlights that guiding principle that all students are capable of making sense of mathematics in creative, interactive, and relevant ways. As you can see up there, we have numerous different ways that students were able to demonstrate their understanding and to, to creatively uh, look at mathematics. So this is a pic collage from uh, Mrs. Hamill's kindergarten class 
Uh, students are discovering the make 10 way of counting and developing that foundation upon which the high school algebra standard is built upon when they are in kindergarten. This is a picture of Mrs. Khan's first grade class. Uh, students are using a tape diagram model to, uh, or a tape diagram to model how to do addition. And we're moving along to second grade. This is Mrs. May's class and uh, shows a student working with the four, six, and 10 fact family, specifically decomposing the number 10 into six and four using a number bonds. And then this is a picture from Mrs. Morgan's fifth grade class. Uh, so they're not working towards that same uh, standard, uh, the high school standard of uh, adding polynomials, but I, I wanted to share it with you. Uh, so students are constructing the meaning of volume of three-dimensional solids. So what's really cool to see here is uh, in those student reflection pieces on the left-hand side, uh, some students responded that they feel confident in math and that it's connected to the real world. So this is from Mr. Tortu's class uh, at the middle school level. So which one doesn't belong routine? So you can kind of take a second to, to think in your head, which one of those four expressions there does not belong and why? So the beautiful thing about this routine is that it's open-ended and it allows all students to answer in creative ways, creating equity in the classroom and removing barriers. Uh, so this was done on the Desmos technology platform which then allows the students to answer independently, but then engage in a reflection as to why they chose the answer they did. So on the next slide, you can see some of the student responses. Uh, so these are not actual student names. They are uh, anonymized using the, the names of famous mathematicians. Um, so I wanted to highlight two of these because um, you can see that the responses utilize the place value knowledge that they get built in those lower grades specifically uh, those two in the middle there. 11 is not a single number, it is a tens number. The other num numbers are single numbers. And underneath it, I feel that this one doesn't belong because of a number in the tens place instead of the ones place like the others. Uh, so you can see students are building that uh, conceptual understanding in the lower grades and then uh, continuing upon it as they enter the upper grades. And then to, uh, to culminate our presentation this evening, you can see through a focused and coherent curriculum utilizing Eureka Math and the daily instructional decisions that our teachers make to bring the curriculum alive for our students leads us to reach our mission statement, which is we shall provide all children with an education that develops open-minded thinkers with a strong academic and interpersonal skills to thrive in an ever-changing world and make it a better place for all. Thank you. Right, board members, comments, questions? Mrs. Elmore Stratton. No, oh, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I thought you were going to tell us the answer to that last <laughs> one, but I was like, please don't, you know. Like this year on March 11th. <laughs> okay, I'll be right there. Um, but I love the way that's set up. Um, the parents that are new to our district, like I know we have all that curriculum like popped in and out, but I think mm -hmm. like, if they wanted to learn more about like, how why they're going to the um, where, where would they go? Uh, so there are links to uh, when we first adopted. Eureka Math is the K-5 curricular resource. We had done Eureka Math Nights, and uh, I believe some of those presentations are still available on the district website. And then uh, one of the, the cool resources that goes along with the uh, student workbooks is kind of like these homework helpers for parents. So if parents aren't familiar with some of the strategies or, or methodologies uh, that their, their children are learning in class, those homework helpers, helpers 
are available. Perfect. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Mayor. Uh, first, thank you. Um, it's uh, a couple, and a couple points in particular. One sort of more personal is that I have a middle, one of our kids is a mid, just graduated middle school. And this program, I think went a long way towards opening his eyes as to what math really can be. Um, and he can't be alone. I'm sure that sentiment was shared by many other students and hopefully parents saw the same things. He went from sort of a struggling math student um, because he wasn't interested in the topic to seeing that math is more and can be more and really enjoying it. Um, and now looks forward to finding other ways to make it um, more, more rational, more um, practical for wh whatever he may go into in the future. And I guess that folds into my second comment, which is great to see in here that at least one of the components of this curriculum is to bring that sort of practical what does math really mean for you in the future? Where, where can you apply that? It's not just numbers. It's not just equations. That works for many students, but not for most. Um, and I think that kind of um, practical information, tying it into the real world is tremendously important. It's not just for math, but really for everything, but math is, a, uh, is an area that I think many students struggle because they don't always see, well, where is this gonna take me? Why do I need to know how to do this? Um, so that's great to see, and, and uh, you just, it's, it's wonderful stuff. Um, thank you for doing it, and uh, you know we look forward to you know seeing more of these kind of um, real successes um, as it's rolled out, you know, at the higher grades as well. It's good. Excellent. Stuff. Thank you, Ms. Stern. Um, so first of all, thank you so much. Um, great, appreciate the presentation. We've been waiting for a while to hear about it, so it's great <laughs> to hear the update. Um, you know, I, I have heard from multiple sources, um, both pe teachers in the district and, and, and parents like um, Ms. Elma Stratmore's mother, who's a teacher, but doing it um, with her own grandkids, as well as other people who teach math, um, that this is a really great curriculum. So a lot of kind of external validation, which is nice because I'm absolutely not a math person. And, and I'm, I'm the parent that in fourth grade, I, I couldn't help my kids with math because I didn't even understand the way they were teaching it. So, um, you know, I very much appreciate, and I think I have a lot of faith in this curriculum. My, my first question is, what are we seeing in the way of, at this point, outcomes with our students? We know our kids have struggled for many years, identifiably in this district with math, as they do in many places in this country, obviously. Um, and certainly in January, we, we saw how much they're struggling through the pandemic. Um, so where are we at right now in terms of the impact we're seeing? And where are we expecting, how are we, you know, going to be knowing um, that, you know, the impact the measure, you know, in terms of measurement, because that's something that the board's always asking about is data. So that's my first kind of question. Uh, I guess thinking about data, when, when we make curricular changes, um, it, it's not a, a quick transition until we see results. So thinking about uh, kind of that external standardized data uh, that, that we get back from the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment, um, we'll see where, where we come back with it. I anticipate that uh, it, it'll take a number of years of students going through and, and engaging with the, uh, the coherence of the program um, until we, we have a, a huge shift in mathematics achievement. I, I don't think you know one year or two years with a new program is drastically going to, uh, to shift those numbers, but I think we're gonna start to see that upswing um, I can speak from, from experience of uh, my children having engaged in Eureka Math at the elementary level for three years now, um, and how that, that conceptual knowledge builds. Um, and it really is a, a tremendous thing to see. So when, when you think about some of our students uh, that were in the first pilot group back in like 2015, 2016, uh, so if they went to Johnson Elementary School, they, they had it in third grade. And then if they went to Carusi Middle School, could have had it in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. So third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth, seventh, eighth, and now going into algebra next year uh, in ninth grade, we'll, we'll start to see the, the impact of the coherence of the curriculum, really helping our students to make sense uh, to achieve mathematics at that higher level, and especially the, the changes at the upper level uh, that we're looking for. 
That, that's helpful. And I, I mean, I, I know I hear a lot about district assessments. I, I mostly complaints from my kids about <laughs> taking them. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, I, I always think that that's also something that I, I assume is helpful, more, um, you know, uh, more accessible data in a more timely manner, because obviously, you know, the state testing, we, you get the results once a year, and that's, that's a long time to wait. So it um, is with the, the district assessments, what we've noticed is uh, teachers have told me that students have performed better on our district assessments than they ever have in the past. So this was, uh, that was a, a specific seventh grade uh, teacher utilizing Eureka Math for the first year this year. So that's, um, that's great. It was, it was amazing to hear. Um, so to, to know that uh, the uh, curriculum that we're using to instruct students is so aligned to standards that then prepares them to be successful on whether it's our, our district assessments or external assessments such as the New Jersey Student Learning Assessment is, uh, is good news. That's yeah, that's right. And that's exactly the kind of data that we're always wanting to hear about. So that that's great. A um, couple more. Um, hopefully some of these are like just a quick, you know, answer question. Um, and one is maybe a little bit more thoughtful, but um, just in terms of uh, introducing it now into algebra, I assume you mean both at middle school and high school level. Correct. And then is it algebra one and two? Okay. Just algebra one. Algebra one. Okay. Um, are we using this curriculum in all levels of classes? Because I know at the middle school, if I'm not mistaken last year in CNI, we were not using it at all levels. Um, or maybe that was the year before I've kind of lost track with the pandemic, but. Uh, so all levels K through algebra. I'm sorry, uh, but the, um, the different levels of um, uh, uh, classes within each grade. So there's levelized classes. Is Eureka Math in every levelized class or it's not, it's just in some? It, it's in all of them. So for the, for next school year, all classes kindergarten through algebra. This current school year, uh, it was all classes K through eight. Uh, so whether it was the, the general ed or self-contained special education classes, utilize the Eureka math curriculum. Okay, and in, and in middle school, it's every level there. I think there's three or currently three levels of math in seventh and eighth, is that? So there's two levels in seventh and three in eighth? Correct. Okay. So in sixth okay. grade, all students take sixth grade math. In seventh grade, the majority of students take seventh grade math and a small cohort of students take algebra. Okay. Um, so those students uh, next year will be using the Eureka Math curriculum. Okay. And then uh, for the students that took algebra in seventh grade, uh, in eighth grade, they will take geometry, which is not utilizing the Eureka Math curriculum. Uh, for students that took seventh grade math, when they get to eighth grade, they will either take eighth grade math or algebra uh, utilizing both of those courses utilize the Eureka Math curriculum. Okay, that's great. Um, and um, the connecting beyond the classrooms is, you know, one of our major overarching goals. Um, just uh, curious how you kind of see this, how we can, you know, and it doesn't have to be an answer tonight, but I think, you know, as we're looking at district goals, you know, how do we support connecting beyond the classrooms? Because obviously that's kind of the part of the intention of this, right? And we want to do it, you know, both supporting the class, but also outside the class. So, um, you know, if you have any ideas or if you want to bring them to, you know, to, to your team and, and fil filter that through to our team, I, you know, certainly something that we want, we want to support as a board. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd be happy to, uh, to go back with my mathematics curriculum <laughs> committee and, and look at it and specifically see how uh, our math curriculum connects with, you know, connecting beyond the, the classroom. Um, one of the things that I had mentioned earlier uh, in the school year back at the a January board meeting with the new high school pathways um, tied into some of that connecting beyond the classroom and going with uh, students choosing a pathway based upon uh, their aspirations upon graduating high school. Um, but I, I'd be happy to further flesh out what that looks like at some of the younger grades too. Yeah, I think we're just, you know, we're just looking for ways to support it. So that, that's great. And last quick, I guess, question is, and this is, you know, I see this with other families. It was certainly my experience. I mean, I think just wondering how you have um, resources available to parents, the homework helpers, how, you know, just hoping that we're, you know, kind of um, making sure that's really readily known and available to families. Um, again, something I know my own family struggle with quite a bit, you know, in terms of helping my kids with math, because it's just not our strength. Um, and, uh, and that if something like this is great, you know, just making sure, you know, it's pushed out and, 
um, to the families so that all families, because that, that's a really important piece with equity is making sure that, you know, families who have, you know, the resources and the access to the resources, it's just really important that all families get that, so. Yeah. Great, yeah, I will work with uh, all of our building leaders and, and teachers to ensure that that information, you know, goes out successfully and is communicated efficiently. That's great, thank you. It's very exciting to see some very concrete and clear cohesive <laughs> path as you, you know, refer to it. That, this that is kindergarten to algebra continuum yeah, it's, it's, in five it's minutes. Wonderful, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and if I can just jump in really quickly, uh, Mr. Goldthorp, I think that that's what the, the objective of tonight was to give you an idea of how this program builds conceptual understanding in students. For, for many students who do struggle, uh, mathematics can be abstract. It is about numbers and it's not about the relevance to, to the real world. Uh, if you notice the, the slide uh, that Mr. Goldthorpe provided of when the implementation of this program started, you also notice that it also coincides with the onset of the pandemic as well, which is probably not the most preferred time to introduce a new program where, you know, things are in flux the way that they were. Uh, so, however, you know, the, the, the glass is half full in my estimation. And as you look at it, you, you, can, you can say there's been positive impact already in spite of the fact we, we faced probably the, the worst time to in, introduce a new program. There's been positive impact for students. Uh, we're seeing positive uh, formative assessment results. And we believe as it begins to build, We'll see even greater greater results. So we're looking we're looking forward to next year. We're looking forward to like uh, you know an opportunity to really immerse the community uh, into Eureka Math. And um, you know as you've seen tonight, we you know we think it it has great potential for us. Thank you, Mr. Goldberg. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. Um, just as a a note for. The many in the community who I know had marked their calendars for tomorrow and our CNI retreat. That will be postponed to soon, um, but it will not be tomorrow. And so, Mr. Goldthorpe, I, ho I hope you'll be there, but uh, we, we're looking forward to really Dr. Morton, Dr. Mahan, Dr. Malash. Um, and it's all related, but you know, th this, this presentation really are thank my thanks to you as well. Uh, it's always great. Curriculum is one of our favorite things to really be able to experience and talk about and we appreciate that it's a long-term process, but we also love hearing about our strategic vision goals. Um, so I always appreciate that you're that you're tying it to one of the three uh, or more. Thank you very, very much. We do not have administrative reports this evening, and that moves us to correspondence. And I will look meaningfully at my fellow Board of Ed members to see if there's anything anyone would like to report. Since last, we, Mr. Mayor. I'll stop. Probably won't be the only one to bring these events up, but I'll start with um, the the three graduations. I had the um, honor to to participate and and see from a, a great vantage point. Um, starting with uh, Carusi's, um, and 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 you know, I would hope this was true for the other two for Beck and Rose. I was unable to attend those, but um, you know, these are middle school kids who really almost half of their middle school years were disrupted in ways that none of them as students and or none of the parents and none of us or the staff could have foreseen um, and to to see them um, have uh, have triumphed um, through all of that the smiles on their faces um, and uh, to hear their names um, read out uh, receiving their diplomas knowing that they're on literally two bigger and better things um, it was wonderful. Um, similar, um, but on a, on a bigger scale, obviously, for both High School East and High School West um, at the Lee Cor Center. Um, both fantastic uh, graduations, wonderful events. Um, and and I'll, my, my focus really was um, on the student speakers um, for both schools. I was so, um, so impressed with all of them. Um, not just that they each had their own different perspectives, um, and points that they wanted to bring out from their from their four years at high school and what they hope for themselves and for their um, their student colleagues, but that um, they also called out um, their partners, their their own colleagues, the staff, the teachers that helped them get through. And it was it was wonderful and really um, uplifting to hear all of these students um, with their own voices, voices which were crafted in, in large measure also by the support 
um, and the, the expert teaching that they got in the four years uh, at the school. So it was great to see that um, support from their parents. And it's good to know that there are a, um, there's a, a, a lot of um, wonderful young, uh, young men and women coming out that have the ability to articulate some, sometimes some difficult, complicated issues and do it in a way that it really um, uplifts the rest of their students, gives them hope for the future. And all of us really, um, that's something that uh, is, is lacking really in, in, in the wider community, not just here, but everywhere. And to, to be able to, to know that, you know, that we are as our small community, larger than many, but still relatively small, um, helping to turn out some students who have a vision um, that are articulate, that are positive, um, and that just says a lot, not just for them, but also for the staff that helped give them those words, um, helped give them that, that vision um, and the ability to look forward. Uh, and so that, that was really the focus for me overall, two wonderful events, um, but, but just hearing the students was, was enough in and of itself to have made it a you know, five stars up, two thumbs up day uh, out in Philadelphia for, for all of us. Thank you. Mrs. Elmore Stratton. Um, yes, I wasn't able to be in our last meeting um, because of a work conflict, but I just wanted to uh, recognize that I went to, um, hold on, I just had it up. I was able to attend the thespian induction ceremony for High School West, which was really well done. Um, so that it was really nice to go to that. And I've felt like a proud parent of one of our uh, former board reps that was recognized there. Um, I took a nice picture and then realized I was a creepy person with a picture of a kid in my phone and <laughs> deleted that real quick. Um, but, you know, kudos to him, job well done. Um, also was happy to be a part of the retiree reception here um, right before I was out for a week. Um, and that was really well done as well. So, um, it was really exciting to see how much everybody really enjoyed their time working with the district. That was pretty cool. Um, and met one of my neighbors, which was also really weird, um, <laughs> but very nice to do. And then um, to echo um, Mr. Mayor Sinemis, participating in the graduations was pretty cool. Um, it was really nice to be at, I went to Carusi's and then of course the two high schools. And it was a, it was a privilege to be able to be back at West um, and actually show parents how to get to the right gym because I went to the wrong one first um, for Carusi. And um, so that was pretty neat to just see how excited those eighth graders were to move up. And of course, with our high school students as well, um, and was able to see a lot of families that I went to school with that I was giving their kids diplomas. So that was pretty awesome. Um, so job well done to all the administrators and, and team that put together those graduation ceremonies. They were great. Ms. Stern? Sure. Um, so I had a, several things that I attended, and then everything ended after graduation. There's been nothing since then. Um, so uh, Dr. Rood, um, uh, Ms. Fleisch, Mrs. Fleischer, and myself, we all attended the um, Alternative High School uh, Recognition Ceremony, which was wonderful and meaningful. And, um, you know, I, I saw kids who in another situation without those kinds of um, resources and supports may not have completed their high school education. You know, these are kids who really had a ton, a ton of support and connection. It's just a really amazing feel. And it was wonderful to see those kids be so successful. Um, and just to witness their families, the pride, you know, as any other, uh, as all, I think, kids who are completing high school, their families feel. Um, and then I attended the uh, High School West Scholarship Night, um, which was really neat. Um, I had no idea how many scholarships are given out to students who are graduating. Um, just again, like, and scholarships for kind of A to Z, all kinds of accomplishments and characteristics, um, scholarships for college and scholarships for uh, moving into um, technical careers um, and trades. It was just really, it was really neat. Um, to see all those kids, uh, military, all those kids get recognized. Um, and again, like a really long 
list of scholarships that I had. I just had no idea that we, we did. So that was a really good for me experience and, and just to see. Um, and then I was able to attend the Barton Art Reception, which happened here. Um, well, we haven't met since then. I'm so, <laughs> sorry, it's been a long couple of weeks. Um, I, I got a chance to see um, Dr. Malash interact with a lot of little kids and ask them to describe their artwork and talk about what they were inspired by. Um, again, very impressed with how supportive our district is of the arts and the creativity of these kids. I mean, the level of like, teaching and mediums and I mean the in-depth education they're getting about art um, and how engaged these kids are and their families are so proud it was just really really neat um, and I was a little envious of their art education because I know mine was not like that so uh, I thought it was amazing um, on June 18th I got a chance to be with um, several board members Mr. Avadia Mrs. Fleischer um, I know there was somebody else. Uh, who, wasn't it? Was it three of us at the, the Juneteenth celebration? I think. Uh, and and, Ms., and Mr. Mayor, right? I know. I was looking around the room. I know <laughs> Mr. Mayor was there too. That's right. Quiet. And yeah, a lot and a, and a, a lot of staff and administrators um, and uh, and JEA. There's just a lot of lot of great support uh, from the from the district, um, and it was it was just a great day. Um, uh, marching together and then being part of the celebration. Um, and then um, got a chance to go to the Rosa Middle School graduation um, as the as a board rep with Mrs. Fleischer, um, which was really cool. Um, I, I realizing it's, it's, I think, the only middle school graduation I've now ever gone to. <laughs> so it's time for me to switch it up next year. Uh, but uh, it was great. I mean, great, you know, musical performance is great to see the excitement of the kids and, you know, the, the difference it makes for these kids to be able to be together. And, you know, we, that's kind of the theme this year, right, to, to accomplish this, despite having all the hardships and challenges of remote learning that they went through. Um, and then, of course, the East and West graduations, which I don't need to go into, but really neat. Um, kind of the, the best time of the year to be a board member, I would say. <laughs> the most the happiest time of year to be a board member. So that's it. All right, thanks, Ms. Stern. Um, yes, Juneteenth was lovely. We were part of the parade uh, on the 18th. Um, well, the Juneteenth Festival, I should say, on the 18th, uh, which was lovely. And I, I don't think it's been mentioned yet, but Beck uh, had a really lovely middle school graduation as well. Um, and the, it was interesting. You know, One of the students was very personal in terms of her journey and her story. It was, it was quite impressive. Uh, I will say that I attended Rose as a parent, uh, Beck as a board member, and then, um, of course, it was at the, the high school graduations, and the, the students definitely stole the show. So much so that in the first one, I really started to get nervous because people talked about how formulaic speeches are, um, and I started to think about if they would uh, call me out, but luckily they said uh, Greek uh, quote, and I chose a Chinese one. So. I think we were okay. Um, really, really great. And it's great to see people at all stages of this journey, but especially in transitions, when you really look back and think about what it was and what it is and where you're going and who you are. Um, and the students, as I said, stole the show. So that moves us from correspondence. All right, and therefore we will go to student representative reports and we'll turn it over to Elizabeth. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, so I'm from Cherry Hill West. We just had our graduation on June 22nd at the Leah Kaur Center. We had the afternoon part of it. We also had the scholarship night, as Ms. Stern remarked. We gave a bunch of scholarships to a bunch of seniors that are leaving. We awarded those. And then we invited the scholarship donors to talk about why those scholarships are given, why they're receiving them. And I think that was a great night. So we also have had some school planning sessions. On June 15th, we had many members of our faculty and our students and our administrators. They came together to begin planning for the 2022-2023 school year. We mentioned bathroom use, code of conduct, restorative practice, and attendance procedures. Students, faculty, and administration will be getting together during the summer for two additional planning sessions as well. 
we had also some students sit in on assistant principal interviews to fill the spot that is being vacant by Ms. Staffen. Very sad about that myself, but we will be introducing Ms. Lohman today um, for board approval. So back to activities, we have our peer, leader, peer leaders rising through the 2022-2023 school year. So they introduced themselves to the middle schoolers on June 1st and June 6th at Rose and Carusi. They also participated in after school training on June 15th. And then back to our department news, the performing vocal and instrumental music, they performed at graduation for the last time for the year. Senior So Low Night was also a huge success, the last chance for all the seniors to showcase all their talents and everything that they've worked for for the past four years. Then back to our academic departments, English, any summer reading materials and summer reading information is posted on the district website with required and choice books for the coming school year. Our computer science, research and science and environmental science students have been excelling as they have been offered internships and scholarships to many students. Computer Science Honor Society had their induction on June 14th as well. And to athletics, fall sports registration opened on June 1st. Spring sports came to a close on June 19th when members of the track team finished their season at New Balance Nationals. And our sports team did an excellent job at representing us throughout the school year. West Esports headed to Florida for the national championship where they made it all the way to the quarterfinals as well. So that is our news for the end of the school year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we do not have a representative from East uh, this time. I think they're both at the, probably at the same place. So they'll let us know that next time. Which brings us to the first public comment. <laughs> There will be two opportunities for public comment this evening. The first public comment session is for board action agenda, uh, no, sorry, board action items only. There will be another public comment for any topic at the end of the meeting. If you are a student, however, in the district, you may comment on any item during the first public comment period. Please do identify yourself as a student and offer you municipality, which would be Cherry Hill. If you would like to speak now, please identify the agenda item, unless you're a student, clearly state your name and municipality. We will alternate between speakers here in the room and those that are online. Each speaker will be given a maximum of three minutes to speak. The timer on the screen will indicate the amount of time you have remaining. Cherry Hill is a community that values education and educational topics often bring out a passionate response. The Cherry Hill Board of Education supports a school climate in which our diversity is a source of strength and all are included. Respect is foundational in how we treat you, how we treat each other, and how we support our administration and staff in their essential work. Please join us in practicing the utmost respect for all. And I usually start, I guess I'll start in the room. Anyone who would like to come up, either a student or someone who would like to speak to an agenda item. Change my screen here. Okay, seeing none. Here or online. Okay, yeah, Mr. Yars. Uh, Yoni Yaris, Cherry Hill. I thought my wife was going to go first on this one. I didn't want to steal her thunder, but it means bedtime could be going rough right now. Um, so 16.3. Uh, but just raised concerns about the last board meeting, and I just want to say the edits that were made by the administration are absolutely incredible for next year's calendar. Um, in terms of putting out there why we're closed. It's really great to see our DEI efforts really put out there so people can know and better understand and hopefully get rid of some of the misinformation coming out or the why are we closed and such. So it was really awesome. Uh, also wanted to acknowledge in section 15.13 uh, other motions. Last time I spoke about this section, we had to bring it to the county. The last time I left out Ms. Sugars and wanted to once again say that our district is amazing because we have four fantastic assistant superintendents who make everything go so smoothly from Dr. Malash John being able to turn to these four incredible individuals really helps um, that we as parents can turn to them. And it really makes our district flow as an excellent and well-oiled operation. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, 
So we don't have anyone with a hand raised online. And therefore, we will close public comment number one. Okay. All right, I will now turn the meeting over to Dr. Malash to share any uh, superintendent comments. Thank you, Mr. Avadia. Uh, I just have some, some brief comments uh, just to follow up on, on some of the things that the board members talked about and that Elizabeth talked about as well. Uh, first, I'm thrilled that Elizabeth and Emily are here with us uh, this evening. I do believe that both of our East reps are uh, traveling this week at a conference. Um, so we'll get an update from them in July. Um, I, when I had the opportunity to talk with the students reps before, I, you know, I tell them that their role as student board reps and as alternates, honestly, is one of the most important roles for a student to hold in the district because they truly become the face and the voice of students in a very public manner. Uh, so we're grateful for their time and we're grateful that they uh, had the opportunity to be here this evening. Uh, so Liz, thank you for the update that you provided. Um, I think Ms. Stern said that, you know, that this is a great time of year to be a board member. This is an incredible time of year in school districts. Um, it's an incredible time to celebrate. It's a busy time of year. Uh, we always talk about how the, the academic year picks up speed after the 1st of January, uh, and it certainly does that through the month of May and into June. Uh, but some tremendous celebrations throughout the course of the month of June uh, that were certainly highlighted by the graduation ceremonies that took place last week and by the senior recognition ceremony that took place at the alternative high school the week before and the fifth grade moving up ceremonies the week before. Uh, graduations are always an exciting time. I love graduations. Uh, I also was able to attend all three of the middle school graduations this year because of the stagger. Dr. Morton and I, um, you know, did our tour through the, the three middle schools and just a, a wonderful opportunity, you know, to see those students uh, and middle school students, as, as many of you know, um, are at a very unique time in their lives. Um, you know, to, so to hear their perspective and, and what they learned about themselves and, you know, where they are off to and, and what they want to do is, is always incredibly um, is always incredibly uplifting. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to attend the high school graduation ceremonies last week. I was ill, um, but I saw some incredible pictures and heard some incredible stories uh, about what took place at the ceremonies, the comments that were shared, the speeches that were made. Uh, and I, uh, again, almost to a person, the people that I heard from um, talked about the, the quality of the speeches and the words the students delivered, um, you know, which is truly a testament um, you know, to who they are as individuals and the representation that they have of their classes. Um, as it is June the 28th, uh, we have begun summer vacation. Uh, the school district, just a reminder for everybody, uh, we go on a four-day um, office. Our offices are open four days a week during the course of the summer. So from now through the end of the first full week in August, um, we do have folks who are in the buildings all five days, uh, but the offices are only open for four days per week. Uh, if you have questions, uh, certainly check our website, call the schools, uh, reach out via email, uh, remind students and families, get started on your summer reading. There's some great new summer reading books at the high school level. All the materials are available online. If you have questions, if you need support for books, let us know. Um, you know, just reach out again to the school or, or to one of us uh, on this end, um, and we can put you in touch with, uh, with additional resources. Um, hopefully, that there will continue to be um, some very good uh, community events that take place. Um, during the course of the summer, the, the Juneteenth event was a wonderful Saturday. Uh, I know that many of the people that are here in this room today had the opportunity to be there and to, and to celebrate um, a great turnout from the community and a, and a great response, um, you know, representative of Cherry Hill and, and who we are. Um, so a wonderful day uh, for all who were involved. So make sure you take time as school year has ended um, because summer is gonna start to pick up speed as well. Enjoy the sunshine, enjoy the fresh air. Um, we do, as Mr. Avadi has said, we're, you know, we, we had to postpone, unfortunately, the retreat from tomorrow evening. Uh, we'll provide information about that. Um, you know, the, the we'll work on solidifying a date over the course of the next week. Uh, as soon as we know that, we'll publish that, push that out to everybody uh, so folks will know when that will take place. July is going to be a really exciting month uh, for us as a school district, uh, which will lead us into August and the preparation for the opening and return of school. Um, I'm already excited uh, for Labor Day. So... Thank you, Dr. Malash. All right. You will notice some changes in the next section. We are uh, a bit short staffed tonight. Um, so you'll hear some different names. Okay. That brings us to curriculum and instruction. And I will ask Mrs. Stratton to move the CNI agenda, please. Okay. 
Okay, the superintendent recommends and I move the following. 13.1, approval of attendance at conference and workshops. 13.2, approval of out of district school student placement. 13.3, approval out of, out of district student placement. 13.4, approval of professional service agreement. 13.5, approval of agreements for the upcoming school year. 13.6, approval of agreements for upcoming school, school year 17,500 and under and approval of professional development service agreements. Do I have a second? Mrs. Stern, any questions? Okay, thank you, Mrs. Sugars. Okay, board members, I have opened up the online voting. You may cast your votes. If you have any um, abstentions or no votes, uh, let me know now. Okay, we have a unanimous yes vote. All right, Ms. Stern, will you move the BNF agenda, please? Sure, the superintendent recommends, and I move the following, 14.1 uh, uh, approval of minutes, uh, special action meeting May 2nd, 14.2 approval of minutes, special action meeting and exec sessions May 10th, 2022. 14.3, approval of minutes, regular meeting minutes and executive session minutes dated May 24th, 2022. 14.4, financial reports. 14.5, approval of ESEA and IDEA F fiscal year 2022-23 budgets. 14.6, resolution of, for the award of bids. 14.7, resolution for the award of RFQs. 14.8, resolution for the award of transportation. 14.9, approval of Cherry Hill McKinney Vento DC PNP students going out of district for the 2021 2022 school year. Okay. Except 14.10, uh, uh, acceptance of donations. Uh, do I have, are there any questions? Oh, I'm sorry, do I have a second? That's the first thing. Mrs. Tong, do I, are there any questions? If not, uh, Mrs. Sugars, can you take a vote, please? Okay, board members, I've opened up the online voting. If you have any abstentions or no votes, please let me know now. Uh, Mrs. Sugars, I need to abstain on the bill list from uh, Jewish Federation uh, to avoid a conflict of interest. Okay, we have a unanimous yes vote. Wonderful. Turn back to Mrs. Stratton for uh, the HR agenda. Superintendent recommends and I move the following, 15.1, termination of employment certificated. You guys know I have an issue with this. Termination of employment, 15.2, non-certificated. 15.3, appointment certificated. 15.4 appointments non, 15.5 leave of absence certificated, 15.6 leave of absence non certificated, 15.7 assignment salary change, 15.8 assignment salary change, 15.9 other compensation, 15.10 other compensation, 15.11 athletic and co curricular contracts, 15.12 approval of sidebar agreement, and 15.8 13 other motions and 15.14 approval of new job description. Do I have a second? Mr. Mayor, any questions? Thank you, Mrs. Sugars. Hey, board members, I've opened up the online voting. You may cast your votes. If there's any exceptions, uh, no's or abstentions, please let me know. Okay, we have a unanimous yes vote. And turn to Dr. Malash for a recognition. Thank you, thank you Mr. Vadia. Uh, I just wanted to, to highlight uh, in the HR portion of the agenda that was just approved, 
Uh, the board just appointed our newest assistant principal uh, for Cherry Hill High School West. And I'm thrilled to introduce you to Mrs. Elisa Lohman. Uh, Ms. Lohman, if you'd walk up to the podium, just a little bit about her. Uh, currently, she's an assistant principal at Delcy Middle School, uh, where her area of supervision <clears throat> and in her time in, in uh, the Delcy School District, um, prior to being assistant principal, she was a supervisor of math and science. She has a bachelor's degree from Rutgers in biology with a minor in math a master's degree in educational leadership and administration from Seton Hall. Um, I've had the opportunity to get to know Mrs. Lohman a little bit through the years through correspondence uh, and in talking about what goes on in our school district with here in Cherry Hill and uh, where she currently is working. And I'm absolutely thrilled that she'll be joining the team at High School West. Uh, Dr. Damon led a committee um, that Elizabeth talked a little bit about, um, but led a committee over at Cherry Hill High School West um, to uh, to hire the newest assistant principal. So I'm thrilled that it's Mrs. Lohman uh, and that she'll be joining the team soon. So Mrs. Lohman, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanna say I'm so thrilled to be the new assistant principal at West. I'm also a resident of Cherry Hill and I have two children in the schools. I have Lauren, who's a rising senior at Cherry Hill West. And I have a daughter, Aaliyah, in Carusi Middle School, who will be a seventh grader. And I just want to say that I chose to live in Cherry Hill because of the school system. And I'm just so honored to be able to give back to the Cherry Hill Public Schools, um, you know, and, and pay it forward because I believe that the administration, the students, the staff, the teachers, um, the families and the community is what makes Cherry Hill great. And so I'm just very honored to be a part of it. Um, thank you, Dr. Uh, Malash for uh, highlighting all of the, um, my previous experiences. Uh, I just wanna say that um, I am here to support Dr. Damon in her vision to um, you know, make sure that all students are college and career ready. And I know that it's a top priority of the board for student achievement, and that's also a passion of mine as well. So thank you again. I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Congratulations and welcome. I will move the PL agenda. Now, how do we do this? Ah, the superintendent recommends, and I move the following. 16.1, approval of harassment, intimidation, bullying, investigation decisions. 16.2, approval of harassment, intimidation, bullying, investigation, hearing decisions. 16.3, approval of the 2022-2023 school calendar. 16.4, approval of wa waiver re of regulation 2340 field trips. And okay, I will move that. Do I have a second? Stern and any comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll turn to Mrs. Sugars for vote. And I have opened up the online voting board members. You may cast your votes. If you have any abstentions or no votes, please let me know. Mrs. Stratton. Um, I'd like to abstain, abstain from 16.1 and 16.2, as I was not present for those. Mrs. Tong? Yes. Um, I have to abstain. Okay, other than the exceptions noted, we have a unanimous yes vote. Okay, um, we do not have items this evening under strategic planning, and that will finish our action agenda. Uh, we, we, well, does anyone have new business to discuss this evening? Okay, I do. <laughs> um, so a, a, a bit of news. Um, over the weekend, Ms. Friedel submitted her Board of Education resignation to me. Uh, her resignation from the board is effective this upcoming Friday, July 1st. Now, next week, uh, on July 1st, we will be a, uh, an eight of nine member board. And so next week, we will communicate out through district communications next step in filling the board seat that, is, that will be uh, vacant. 
for a term that will expire this upcoming December. This process will be similar to one that we undertook earlier this year. Uh, we will have clarity in terms of what the steps of the process are and what those timelines will be. Um, so if um, Board of Education representation is a, an aspiration of yours, we hope to hear from you. Um, and we will have a process much like we have the last uh, bunch of times. But I did, before moving off this point, want to thank Kim um, for her many years of service and dedication to all Cherry Hill students. I appreciate um, the many years of her leadership and contributions to our vital work and wish her the best in everything that's ahead. Um, I know she will continue to make uh, a, a nice, sizable, important impact on what happens in Cherry Hill. Um, and I will, I will miss her on the board. Um, so, but that is some, uh, some news that I am imparting this evening. Um, and I'll turn it over to Ms. Stern next. I just want to, I mean, unfortunately, Ms. Cradell isn't here for me to say this to her face directly, but I'm sure I'll have an opportunity to do so. But I just want to publicly state that I very much appreciate her service to the board, her contributions. Um, she, you know, had bring, just really brought a tremendous amount of um, participation to the board. And that was really, you know, really appreciated. She was really a, you know, a leader. So I'm sorry to see her go. And uh, I'll let her know that myself. <laughs> Wanted to say that too. Sounds good. I don't know if anyone else wants to. I, I'll tell you that I, I personally, I always felt a little awkward, but okay, yes, yes, Mrs. Tong. No, 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 I, I've already done my awkward part, um, but no, go, Mrs. Tong, it's out, over to you. I just want to thank you for Mrs. Fardell for volunteering all these years, and she did a great job. Very good voice in our board, of, of board as part of the board, and I wish her the best of luck. Thank you. Wonderful. Mrs. Stratton? Be the same, just echo everyone's sentiments. Thank you, Ms. Friedel, for her time and, um, and just her teamwork as we've all been working together these past couple of months. Mr. Mayor? Yeah, also, uh, thank Ms. Friedel for, uh, for her dedication. And um, as, as the newest member of the board here, I learned a great deal in just a handful of months by listening to her questions, her concerns, um, her insights uh, I found valuable uh, and will continue to, to use those. Um, you know, daily. Um, so I'm sorry to see her go, um, and, but thank her for all the work that she, uh, that she did while she was here. Wonderful. Thank you all. Um, I'm going to turn it over then, unless anyone has, okay, to old business. Is there any old business to discuss this evening? Mrs. Strat. Um, Mr. Avadia, I don't know if this sort of old business since we just voted on it um <laughs> but just wanted to highlight that the calendar that the the committee was able to add Eid as a, a day off for um next year which is great and I, I wanted us to you know highlight number one that the team was able to make that shift so thank you so much and then to the students that requested it and advocated for it um that's a nice example of the way that you use your voice properly and, and accordingly and change is seen. Um, and I'm happy that we were able to do it immediate and, and um, so that they can feel it and impact. So just kudos to that. All right, I hate to do it, but I also have old business um, to report. Um, and that is that we've, we've, we've talked about different timelines <clears throat> and one that is shifting that we haven't mentioned yet tonight is that we, it is our responsibility as a board to come up with district goals. Um, this is a process that is a little different every, every year, but it's something we, we have to do. Our intention was to talk about that tonight. We will talk about it in an open forum um, and with, with something that people can see, uh, but we are gonna need a little bit more time. So July 12th, that will be on the docket. Um, yeah, plenty to do on, in, in July. July 12th, we will also have our resolution with the projects uh, for the bond, which of course we've already spoken about, but we will formalize that action at that time. So um, we hope everyone and, and more will join us again on, on July 12th. Any other old business out there? And seeing none, we will turn to second public comment. Second public comment. Ah, you can comment on any topic, anyone. Um, if you'd like to speak now, please clearly state your name and municipality. We will alternate between speakers here in the room and those that are online. Each speaker will be given a maximum of three minutes to speak. The timer on the screen will indicate the amount of time you have remaining. 
Cherry Hill is a community that values education. And educational topics often bring out passionate response. The Cherry Hill Board of Education supports a school climate in which our diversity is a source of strength and all are included. Respect is foundational in how we treat you, how we treat each other, and how we support our administration and staff in their essential work. Please join us in practicing the utmost respect for all. And I'll start in the room. Yes. So, uh, sorry, I, I'm a little late. So you mentioned that That's we can okay. you come just and- You just wanna start with your name and municipality. So we can come in on any topic, right? Yes. Oh, okay. My name is Jenny Yuan. Um, I'm a mom of two uh, Cherry Hill High School students. And first of all, I want to uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. I uh, also want to thank everyone in the room and also the entire Board of Education members for their contributions to the development of the Cherry Hill Public School District. Um, our family moved to Cherry Hill more than 10 years ago because of the high reputation of the school district. We have great teachers. I still feel we have so many great teachers, responsible parents. We have the great BOE members, and we have um, students who are eager to learn. So I'm here to express my concerns. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, hold on. <laughs> sorry. That's a technology bug, right? I'm here to express my concerns about the proposed transfers of teachers around the district. My understanding is that everything we do is in the best interests of Cherry Hill Public School students. And the example I cite my son's AP history teacher at Cherry Hill High School East. Tom Rosenberg has taught AP US history for nearly 20 years with outstanding results. Without belaboring his bona fides, how does taking a teacher teaching a college level course to students on the cusp of going to college and transferring him to a middle school benefit students at either location. This is my general question. I also joined the previous public board of education meetings, either online or in person, but I haven't been able to figure this out, why this transfer happened. I use Mr. Rosenberg as my example, because if his transfer is representative of any other that has been proposed, and that cannot be known until the all the moves are scrutinized. The vote on these transfers should be delayed. The process of moving teachers will take time and should take time. We're not talking about a handful of teachers either, but rather over 30, if I understand correctly. A move of this magnitude needs time to evaluate the necessity, but if such a move is truly necessary, it should be carefully considered. These are people who gave the district its reputation and our students their success. They are experts in their positions. Please do not take this transfer slightly. Please hold the vote and review these proposed moves to guarantee our students will benefit. Thank you again for giving me the time and chance to speak. Thank you. Thank you. We'll turn to the line with Dr. Potowitz. Hello, this is Jeff Potowitz. Um, I live in Cherry Hill. I hope you can hear me. Um, at a previous meeting, I referred to the um, NPR article, when the Nazis took Manhattan, the article also referred to the Unite to Right rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, and noted 80 years later, the philosophy is still there. And all these groups maintain they are patriarch and American. And this is the America they see. At the school board meeting, at a school board meeting um, that in effect reauthorized all policy, I asked that from policy 2000, uh, 2100, a small portion in parentheses be removed. The board commits to the school district to promote the success of a number, a list, and then in parentheses, students who have a racial identity other than white. I basically asked whose definition of white is the school board and administration using? Uh, of course, the policy was reaffirmed that the school board meeting dated June 14, 2022, 17.3 objected to the inclusion under the vision statement of establishment 
establishing new relationships with faith-based and cultural community organizations. Know that the Nazis, the neo-Nazis, et cetera, in the U.S. considered and consider themselves as cultural and maybe religious organizations. I was concerned about the president it would set. The district was not concerned. And I look back and say, well, they were right. Why should they have been concerned? Well, today I read an article entitled U.S. Supreme Court Takes Aim at at Separation of Church and State. Reuters, uh, U.S. News by Hurley and Chung, uh, June 28th, that was today, 2022. It starts, the conservative majority U.S. Supreme Court has chipped away at the wall separating church and state in a series of new rulings. Know that ideologues never see it as chipping something away. That is their power, and they willed it, willed it that way. The question is, what will be the consequences and results of what they are building? They're not chipping something away. They are building something. But what is it and what will be the consequences? Um, thank you very much. Thank you. We will return in the room. If anyone would like to. Short. Rick Short, Cherry Hill, 1002 Chelton Parkway. First off, I want to thank uh, Dr. Potowitz, because while he's way into a subject, he's pointed out a blaring, a blaring issue, which, 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 which actually I've, I've basically solved the matrix that's going on in Cherry Hill. And I'm going to have to ask Dr. Malash this one question. I mean, I, I am going to meet with you, Dr. Malash. And uh, if you're meeting with me, I'd love to video it because we have a lot of questions and in three minutes, I can't ask them. But the biggest question for our goals of this school and what makes a school district great. Do you ever look at other districts? Do you ever go to the Facebook page of another district? Um, I'm sorry to say, but Dr. Malash needs a total makeover. You go through his one minute talks. It's all about groups. Yes, sir. Let's see. The before and after school group, we celebrate them today. That is a group. Today, we celebrate nurse group. Now, if you look at a successful school district, what do they celebrate? They celebrate their students. They celebrate their teachers. And they never break everything down to groups. And uh, it finally happened, like I said, three weeks ago when Dr. Potowitz was talking about this. Everything is around groups. We go back to the equity audit that we spent $173,000 for. And the equity audit, we broke down groups, but it got worse. It got worse with racism, ladies and gentlemen. You didn't break down the groups. You broke down the race and the test scores, and then you compared it. Now, do we teach uh, in schools in first grade? Do we separate our races? Do we say black and brown kids sit over here and the Latinos sit over here and do we compare it? Do you see what's going on in this school district? We are breaking down groups. It is crazy. It is crazy nuts. And after listening to Dr. Potowitz, I, I gotta agree with them. We are breaking down groups. So until this district puts students first, teachers first, and like the, the poor teachers in Cherry Hill East, when they came up in that auditorium and they were talking about their morale and how their morale is being affected and you still have people coming in from the public, it all comes down to about groups. And that's what this district is doing. And that's what these con men with the equity, diversity and inclusion, these guys you brought in from Dr. Kinde to Dr. Greeson, all they want is equity. And the only way it's going to be able to be stopped is if Dr. Malash does a makeover or if this board resets its goals in July, because it's not going away. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I will go to the line with Mr. Neary.
Laurie Neary, Cherry Hill. I just wanted to call in regarding Ms. Friedel's resignation to say thank you for her service, her time, her dedication, her thoughtfulness, her deliberate questioning, um, giving of her time. Um, she gave it her all. She certainly was there for every student. Every child was always at the forefront of every question she asked, every decision she made, and she never took that lightly. Um, she was a true leader, educational leader and expert. And I know that she will continue to advocate and fight for our kids here in Cherry Hill. They, they sure could use a person like that on their side. Thank you, Ms. Friedel. Thank you. Okay, we will come back in the room if there's a taker. Uh, hello, my name is Anis Arjan and I am a actually proud student of uh, Cherry Hill East. I know just how uh, privileged and blessed I am to be able to attend the school district and to be able to receive the education that I receive. And I know that an integral part of that education are the teachers that help me out with my curriculum and teach me and care for me. And um, I would also like to raise my voice in concern about the teacher transfers that are going on during uh, uh, for next year's school year. And um, coincidentally, I'd also like to cite uh, Mr. Thomas Rosenberg as an example of my concern. Um, I mean, I'm a rising junior at East and I was very much looking forward to taking AP US History 2 next year. And Mr. Rosenberg was the teacher who was supposedly going to teach that course. And uh, even though I did not receive lessons from Mr. Rosenberg this year as a sophomore, um, I was uh, vice president of history club at East and uh, we like to call ourselves a merry band of nerds, but um, Mr. Rosenberg was definitely, you know, one of us. He was always there for us. You know, he was the guy who, you know, if uh, our normal chaperone couldn't be there for a meeting, he would immediately, you know, rush to uh, be there for us and ensure that we were able to have our meetings. And um, he was really a, definitely a pillar of support and a pillar of you know, foundation for us students. Uh, and it's not just Mr. Rosenberg, it's the same with uh, many teachers, uh, the nine teachers that are being taken um, uh, or proposed to be taken from East and uh, re redistricted. Um, and I mean, again, it's I believe a waste of Dr. of Mr. Rosenberg's potential and his uh, teaching prowess to you know, take him from where he's teaching this college level course to uh, avid eager students like me who were really looking forward to having him as a teacher and you know, putting, sending him to a middle school. Um, like I said, it's not just Mr. Rosenberg. We have you know, science teachers at our school who are being you know, taken from teaching their advanced rigorous courses and you know, being sent to teach a course like intro to biology. I mean, uh, I am genuinely concerned and like a previous speaker has cited, I don't think that We've been given enough uh, reason to validate these uh, these uh, restructures. So I would again like to urge you, uh, you know, members of the board, and it's been a great experience for me to be able to attend and listen in so far. And I genuinely think that you are people who have the best interests of the students of this district in your minds and hearts. And but I would just request that you uh, again take a closer look at these proposals um, and hear the concerns of me and nearly 2,000 other students at Cherry Hill East, among other students in the district. Uh, thank you so much for listening to me. Thank you. We will go to the line next with Ann Einhorn. Ann Einhorn, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Thank you, Kim Friedel. I know it was an easy start when you were first elected to the Board of Education. But unfortunately, you had to go through a pandemic and a myriad of social and economic issues regarding our district. I certainly appreciate the time. I do remember what it was like. I think it's worse now, um, as I do the other board members. So whatever happens, Kim, I wish you well. I wish your family well and much success to you. I would like to address the prior speaker about Dr. Malash needs a redo. Dr. Malash has been more than courteous, has requested that you meet with him 
And from my understanding, that has not been done yet. So why would you meet with someone who you believe needs to be a redo? Because I personally believe that you will not listen to him. Our district has always been driven by data. Not only has our district, but the state of New Jersey uses data, okay? We've always used groups. The US Census uses data and breaks down ethnic groups. There's also an issue here with this word equity versus equality. Someone needs to explain to a community member what is the difference and how it will eventually relate to our district, our curriculum writing, and our moving forward for the students of Cherry Hill. I fully support this superintendent. I know I'm called the rah-rah person, but quite frankly, I've been, I was, went through three superintendents myself. And those three superintendents certainly didn't have to deal with the pandemic and nearly their boards of education. It's been a difficult couple of years, which is only heightened by erroneous remarks on Facebook, accusations, divots of information pulled from whatever speech, from whatever person. I think we can do better. I sure hope we can do better. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so we will return into the room once again, see if anyone else would like to approach. Uh, Dean of Mintz, uh, Parents for Academic Ac Excellence. Um, I'd like to just bring back the conversation to um, the sexual curriculum that is going to begin in September of this year. I'd like to know if the board has decided to postpone the implementation of the sex ed curriculum um, and give the public an opportunity to review the curriculum before uh, it gets implemented. I also would like to save the Cherry Hill taxpayers um, many, many thousands of year, um, dollars per student. Um, basically, by focusing on, as, as previous speakers before me, on group identity, we're basically wasting our dollars. So unless we are serious about teaching individual students to their individual success and teaching personal accountability, we are failing those students. And based on what I've seen for the past year, uh, there's really no uh, at all implementation of any idea of you know what you need to learn basic reading math uh, writing and so on it's all about what group do you belong to what skin color you have what ethnic what you had and so on and so forth uh, so I find that it's really not a serious place to send your child to. If you really are concerned parents about a, a parent about academic excellence, the Cherry Hill school system is not for your child. Um, they're not gonna teach your child any reading or math or writing. They're just gonna indoctrinate your child into your whatever ideological doctrine of the day it is. Uh, very popular, very catchy. You can go and march. You can be a social activist. Fantastic, your child is gonna grow up and go and demonstrate. Uh, when it comes to actually having your child competing in a professional world, uh, they have no chance. And that's the idea. The idea really is to make your child as dumb as possible. So when they graduate, they'll believe whatever you tell them. Um, so I'm sorry, the Board of Ed, I know you're spending a lot of hours on this Board of Education in Cherry Hill, uh, but the product is going down and down and down. And obviously there's no no care about academics whatsoever because I really do not see any serious conversation about educating our children for personal responsibility and giving them the skills to have critical thinking for the rest of their life. We're robbing their mind away from them. And I'm very disappointed in this leadership of this school and the Board of Education that is rubber stamping everything that is coming in front of you. And you're capitulating to the teachers unions and all of the other uh, stakeholders of the educational industrial complex, where your only duty is, is for that single student that is coming to school every day to learn and you are failing them. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Mintz. All right, with no one approaching, uh, oh, I, okay. 
Mr. Yaris. No, it's okay. It is uh, It is your time. Thanks. Uh, Yoni Yaris, Cherry Hill. First off, on first knowledge, Ms. Fridell, we not have always agreed on everything, but you were a fantastic servant to all of us, and we will miss you on the board, and best of luck, and I look forward to seeing you on that side of the room uh, where the cool people sit um, uh, when you get a chance to want to come back to board meetings. Um, want to also make a recommendation to the board. We just went through this process with Mr. Mayor. Is it possible to reach out to the finalists if the board feels like they are suitable again as finalists to shorten the process? You've got a lot going on with a bond coming up imminently. The shorter time we can be down to eight members is be better um, in terms of being efficient and effective for the board, but it, I appreciate the process of what it needs to go on for the next six months to fill that spot. Um, in terms of the public speakers, I am somewhat of an expert now on the Every Student Succeeds Act and the Elementary Student Elementary and Secondary Education Act. That is what you all have to be responsible for for supporting our students and what the school report cards are all about. Um, so I think it'd be important to note what subgroups are and what is required by the district as per a document that was put out in the prior administration. Subgroups, a group of students identified by a particular characteristic such as race, ethnicity, English proficiency, disability status, or income. Using a specific guide about individual student groups help to identify and overcome obstacles. The key part is overcome obstacles. What I have seen this board done in the administration time and time again is continually work to overcome the obstacles that have been placed in front of our students for generations. This board and this administration have been the first to truly tackle that and look at how do we work at the individual student basis. And for personally, I was offended as someone who loves this district. And I know there are challenges of the previous speaker to blast our district from the mic. I'd also like to see if some more restraint placed on public comment. Um, the comments are supposed to be addressed to the board, uh, not campaign messaging, not reporting for your campaign or things like that. It's supposed to be an opportunity to have a conversation with the board and present concerns. i like us to get back to that and not see this mic be used as a campaign message and a campaign vehicle for right wing and other nonsense. That just doesn't belong here. We're focused on the students. I've seen this board time and time again, keep bringing it back to the students to make sure that every student when they walk through the doors can succeed. And I think we're doing more and more to do that. We've done a great job through really digging deep in terms of accessibility to our buildings. Anything from the moment a student gets off the bus to a parent who comes into the building, we're now looking at how can they get in to make sure that when they walk in, they are welcome and they feel approachable. And I think we've done a great job at that. I hope the board knows where to take things from a grain of salt that they come from the public versus what truly are the concerns in the district. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that will end public comment. Um, thank you all. Um, there have been comments about changing public comment. That is something that we're looking at through through PL, really not on, on the lens of content, um, but perhaps there's other things there. I will say just on the board level, so it really is up to the board to replace members. Um, I, 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 just to the last thing, I think that we need to open up to it. To, I mean, unless board members differ, I think we really need to open up because what was true when we selected uh, this, this gentleman was very different. We just don't know. We don't know if, if those people are, we don't know. I think I, I like the, the idea of an open call. Um, and I will say that in, in our district, we have a lot of great outcomes. And if you can't see that, I don't know. I, I, I think that's, that's a shame. Anyway, I will turn it over to Dr. Malash to uh, address anything that he would like to. Thank you, Mr. Avadia. Just a couple of things um, from this, this, uh, from this evening, from the public comments. I would agree with you the, you know, the, if, the last week certainly highlighted for us, or the last month has highlighted for us um, some of the tremendous outcomes uh, that we have for our students at different grade levels. And then ultimately, when kids graduate from high school, um, having the opportunity to attend the college of their choice uh, and pursue the goals that they choose, uh, or to go into the military or to go into work. Um, but we do have a tremendous record of success you know, with what our students are doing and what their opportunities and, and options are. Uh, if folks have specific questions, they want to talk about that. Again, we'll certainly avail ourselves, you know, to uh, to have those discussions. Mr. Short, I'll look forward to meeting with you. Again, I, you know, you know how to get in touch with me. I'm an easy person to find. Um, I appreciate you continuing to highlight the need for the, the ongoing equity work that we are doing, um, the importance of it, uh, the value of it, and, and why it's something that we cannot take our eyes off of as a school district uh, or as an institution as we continue to move forward. So I do appreciate you keeping that in the forefront uh, of folks' minds uh, as we go 
as we go forward. I also want to thank Ms. Friedel um, for her service to the board. Um, with her background and her experience, you know, Ms. Fidel certainly brought a unique perspective to the board, uh, which was incredibly valuable. Um, as the board vice president, I had an opportunity to work very closely with her uh, throughout the course of a year. Um, so I, I wish her the best and, and appreciate the service that she volunteered uh, and dedicated to the school district. Um, there really is no uh, any, uh, there's no additional information regarding teacher transfer um, at this time. Uh, I think that's it, Mr. Avadia. All right, thank you. We have the necessity of a second uh, or of, uh, of an executive session to uh, to discuss personnel next. No action will be taken as a result of this executive session. I make a motion to go into that executive session. Do I have a second? All in favor? Raise your hands. All right, we are in recess.